Hi, my name is Stephanie Merrill, and this is the Grand Narrative Communication Pro Project uh, for GLST 220. My country is Israel, and so a lot of Israel is of the Jewish faith. They also have a smaller portion of Muslim, and then just a, a kind of mix of everything else. And so a lot of the New Testament that we're going to talk about in the beginning of this conversation, I believe we can all agree that God created heaven and earth. He created day and night, man and woman, animals, sea creatures, the sea. Um, all of this took place in six days, even in the Quran. Allah did this in six days. And interestingly enough, God, Allah is translated to the God. So God is our higher power, is our infinite creator. And so he created man and woman. And they lived in, in the Garden of Eden with God. The rule that they had was not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And temptation happened. The devil tempted Eve to eat of, of this tree, and it happened, and this introduced sin in the world. And because of this sin, people started living in chaos and violence and, and just were not good. We see this in the story of Cain and Abel where Cain's jealousy of Abel being favored by God caused him to kill his own brother. You know, God had a plan to restore or, or try to correct this. And so he was going to wash away the earth. He found favor in Noah because he couldn't be corrupted by the sinful environment around him. The Lord instructed Noah to build an ark and board it with two animals of every kind on earth. And along with his wife, his sons, and their sons' wives, lived on this ark for over a year while God flooded the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And they waited till the waters receded. And then they went out and repopulated the earth. But because man is sinful by nature, we decided that we were going to get ourselves to heaven and we decided we were going to build a tower into the heavens and be able to get us there ourselves but what we didn't understand was that it's God's grace that allows us into heaven not ourselves and so God confused their speech they couldn't finish it because they couldn't understand each other Abraham and his wife were barren and God promised them that they would have a child and he he upheld his promise. God also tested Abraham because he wanted to make a covenant with him. He wanted to make sure he was right. He told him to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham followed, did what the Lord said. And this is how God established the relationship with the Jewish people is through Abraham. Abraham being obedient and following the instruction. He knew that God promised great prosperity to him. He had he promised the land of Canaan, the promised land, as a blessing to Abraham, Sarah, and their covenant children, and by extension to all of the Jewish people. It's important to understand that Abraham's story is, is that God has promised a way for eternal life with him and his kingdom. Enjoying eternal family and a life that God 
enjoys. We will enjoy that life. True faith in the Lord and obedience is why God chose Abraham for this covenant, which started the relationship between the Jew God and the Jewish people. And then we have the Jewish people still in bondage with Pharaoh. Um, Pharaoh feared that the Israelites would revolt against Egypt because they were starting to grow in, in, in numbers. Um, so he ordered every firstborn Hebrew to be thrown into the water. But God does not promise us that he will, n that we'll never go through hardships. But what he does promise is to see us through those hardships. And he had a plan to deliver the Israelites from Pharaoh's bondage to give them hope again. They would surely have more hardships to endure, but this was all a part of his plan to unite all nations to him. Putting our faith in God to see us through our tribulations is the message here. One God now and forever is the covenant made through Moses. God promised to bring the Jewish people out of bondage and to make a way for them to escape the soldiers at the Red Sea to escape Egypt. He provided food and water for them while they were in the wilderness. Um, it's not promised things that he does not deliver. It, de it is delivered in God's timing. And that's where the frustration happens. Is because we cannot understand all the things that God is doing in our favor. We just know what we want now. And if it doesn't happen, we feel like God's not with us anymore. But that's not the case. He is, he is always with us. And so while the Israelites, while Moses was leaving, leading the Israelites in the wilderness, this is where we get the law, the Mosaic law. God face to face gives Moses the Ten Commandments. This is often why, you know, Moses is called the lawgiver is because this is where the Ten Commandments happened And so, you know, Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land because um, he was disobedient and, you know, did not show the people that this blessing of water was from God when he told, when God told him to speak to a rock um, and water would flow. Moses took the credit and said, you know, I give you water. And so he was not allowed into the promised land. And then we get um, the story of David and Goliath. David was chosen to be king because he had what Saul didn't, a heart for God. It's important to cultivate a heart for God more than anything. He's no, He knows what's in our heart. And it is what, it's that that makes us useful in God's kingdom. If we walk by the Spirit... We will not give in to the desires of the flesh. The Spirit of God equips us to honor the will of God. Being fearful of God more than anyone or anything will allow us to obey and please the Lord in powerful ways. This is evident in the story of David and Goliath. David was a little guy. Goliath was massive. And yet he was still able to defeat him with a slingshot. That's only because God power, God's favor, because David was fully trusting in the Lord to take care of it. Now we have the prophets who are used for God to get the message out to his people. He's trying to show us God's love for his creation um, that even when we deny his will, he is merciful and gracious and forgiving. We all need to ask for it and to accept him into our hearts. 
God had a plan to come once again. And this is going to be the last time that he intervenes. He's going to send forth a savior, the Messiah, to save the world from sin. He was born to Mary and Joseph. Mary was a virgin and was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Because this, Jesus was not fully man, or he was fully man, but he was also fully God. And the way we know this is because if Jesus was only human, he would not have been able to live a sinless life. Because he would have been born into human nature, which is a sinful nature. The beginning of God's divine plan to show humans the love he has for us. He came to earth in the flesh through the life and body of Jesus Christ. He lived a perfect life to teach us how he wants us to live and how to love each other. It's written in the Old Testament that a savior or the Messiah would come to earth and save God's people. Jesus is the savior and is proven by the miracles that he performed. If Jesus were just a prophet, he would not have been able to accomplish all that he did on earth because a prophet is still a human and Jesus is God in the flesh, which means Jesus has the ultimate power, which man does not. Jesus knew what his future was and he understood that it must happen to redeem man in the eyes of God. This is evident by his last words. It is finished. Meaning God's plan for salvation is done. It is up to man to complete the faith and to learn from the life of Jesus. No one will come to the Father except through Jesus. We have to know Jesus. We have to accept him into our souls, into our hearts. What Jesus has done for humanity is the most powerful service to us all by enduring the brutal murder that paid for our sins. We cannot have eternal life in God's kingdom without acknowledging the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we do this, the Holy Spirit is a blessing that comes and fills our heart. And I can tell you that I was not raised in a Christian church, but when I gave my life to Christ, I have never felt more peace and calm and love. I don't even feel this amount of love from my husband or my own child that I do from the Holy Spirit. This is a way that I know that God is with me always because I feel it in my heart. And when I'm going through hard times, he tells us, I will never leave you. And this is how I know, because I feel him with me. The church is is supposed to build up the body of Christ. We are all God's children. He wants to all know us and unite us in heaven as a family. It is pleasing to the Lord to introduce us in our mission, to bring more people to him, to introduce others to him, so that we will be able to live together united in his home. Christ is going to come back for us. And when he does, it's going to be destruction. He is going to take us up to our home in heaven. And we are going to be restored, renewed. We're going to have perfect bodies. We are not going to hurt anymore. There will be no illness. It's going to be truly paradise. No more wanting. No more suffering. Just pure joy. That is the impressive love of God. He is going to restore us in his home. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day.